Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. I am Kathy McGlinchey, and I am a deacon here, and I am delighted to see all of your faces in three dimensions, as, <laughs> as, earlier, as, as opposed to uh, two dimensions on Zoom. So I'm very happy to be back with you all and to my friends on Zoom. Um, we are asking in person worshipers that are Forming in person worshipers that masking is optional in accordance with the main CDC guidelines for counties that are experiencing medium rates of COVID 19. Uh, we ask those online to please remain muted during responsive and unison prayers and also to please remain after the service uh, for Zoom fellowship time. Uh, there will be a, uh, a meeting concerning the annual church fair planning today directly after worship both in person and on Zoom in the sanctuary. The meeting will probably last about 20 minutes or so. Um, and we'll have coffee and tea and fellowship hall after the meeting. You are invited to join uh, Pastor TJ today at the Pride Fest at Milton Park in Ellsworth from 11.30 to 5. All events are free. Uh, show our support by wearing your blue God is Still Speaking t-shirt. And I know that people online can't quite see the altar, but there is a lovely um, rainbow-colored um, banner that says, you are loved, because you are all loved. Uh, a, new a new New Testament study group skips a week while Pastor TJ is on vacation, and we'll meet again on Wednesday, June 22nd at 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock in person and on Zoom. Um, Pastor Jeff Yidey will be our pulpit supply on Sunday, June 19th, while TJ's away. And also, just for your information, uh, the Sunrise Association Spring Meeting was yesterday, and it was attended by Kat Summer, Vicki Espling, Mary Angela Davis, Mick Davis, and Reverend TJ. And the priests. And the priests. And the priests. Sorry about that. That was my fault. And the priests, Alexander. Um, are there any announcements from the congregation, um, in person, on Zoom? Um, June birthdays and anniversaries coming up in the next week. Uh, June 12th, Gary and Bobby Hunt. 13th, Bob Schmidt. 14th, Clancy King. June 15th, Rosalind Lowry. Uh, June 17th, Ginny. Shaw Coleman, also on June 17th, David Mack, uh, June 19th is Ron Schweitzer, and June 19th also is Sandy Pippen. Any other birthdays or special celebrations anyone want to share? Oh, Jean, hang on one second, Jean. She's coming with the mic. <laughs> oh, we'll do Richie Lynch party for her birthday yesterday. Eleanor Richie oh. yesterday. Today. 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 So let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
I'm Norman T.J. Mack. We are the Union Congregation and Church of Hancock, an open and affirming church of the United Church of Christ denomination. I am so glad you are all here this morning. We have a, a newish sign out as you enter the church. It says, you are welcome. All races are welcome, all classes, all ages, all religions, all bodies and abilities, all genders and identities, all sexual orientations, all countries of origin, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please be in the spirit of worship as we join to sing our introit, Weave, in our red hymnal number 375, Handing the Boy. <laughs> Join in singing the verse in Culture Nation Race, race a red hymnal number 372. <laughs>
join me in the invocation. God, God our Father, God who comes way, God who shapes us in the fire, we are made new in your presence. We come seeking your wisdom, crying out our concerns, needing your peace. Use this time to form us as a community, connected through your breath, life, and hope that propels us as your body in the world. Amen. Time for our children's message. Let's see, will you join me on the stairs? have you here. Before we talk about our children's message, you want to tell people what you did yesterday? <laughs> Is that too much? Do you want to share that or not? So... <laughs> okay, so yesterday I got to go see Lucy at her violin recital. Oh. And then later, the same day, at her ballet Ooh. recital or show, yeah. she had a very big day. <laughs> and she's very good at both things, violin and ballet, and probably many other things as well. So this morning, Lucy, what do I have in my hand? An egg. <laughs> Happens to be a chicken egg. You have chickens. A lot of our People in the views or online have chickens that they, they raise for eggs. And there's a well, so when I was thinking about God this week and specifically Trinity Sunday, I started to think about an egg. Any idea why? Well, the Trinity is a hard concept to grasp. There are some other pastors in the house, and they might be just as confused about it as I am. <laughs> it takes some faith and trust, and it takes some mental gyrations, some, some somersaults in our minds to make sense of the Trinity sometimes. So I thought I'd use the egg to help. How? So when we talk about God as Trinity, we talk about one God but having three separate parts. We have God, we have Jesus Christ, and we have the Holy Spirit. So one egg, if you think of the shell, holding it all together. The shell is the big God, holds it all together. And inside that shell are two more parts. There's a yolk, and there's an egg white. So we have one unit, one egg that this chicken manufactured for us, but it has three parts. So it's another way to think about how can one be three? How can three be one? So we have different names for God. Like I said, God, and then we have Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we have different names from that. We have Creator, and Redeemer, and Sustainer. So as you grow up, you see you'll hear lots of different names for God and the Holy Spirit. They're all the same thing. It's not complicated in our heads, but we try. So thank you for joining me for the message. Let's have a prayer before the kids go to Sunday school with Grandma and Josiah. Thank you, God, for being present with us in all ways, in many ways, and even in confusing ways. We are grateful for our lives and for what we share with you. Thanks, Lucy.
the Old Testament reading today is Isaiah 55:12, and the translation um, is from the Message Bible, by uh, translated by Eugene Peterson. You'll go out in joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. The mountains and hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. All the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant applause. And the Old Testament message is um, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. It's from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance. Then endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us.
Please pray with me. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've quoted theologian Richard Lohr in the past. His words are in effect, if it is true for one, it can be true for all. If it is true for Jesus, it can be true for us. This one verse from Isaiah, I would like to repeat. You'll go out in joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. The mountains and hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. All the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant with applause. This verse from Isaiah needs to be true for all of God's children. We need to make it a reality for all of God's children. In a perfect world, we would all know this, this verse, this reality to the depths of our souls. We would all know that we are celebrated by God and by all of God's people. Today we're talking about pride, as well as the Trinity, We're talking about pride, We're talking about gay pride, which is celebrated in the month of June all around the world. Celebrations are designed to affirm the lives and loves of LGBTQ plus people everywhere and to raise awareness of prejudices and injustices that still need to be addressed. We may take so much for granted. We tend to universalize our own experiences. If our own family of origin shows us unconditional love and respect and care, we might tend to think all others receive those, receive those same gifts, those same graces from their families. Of course, not all do. Some are rejected or neglected by parents, grandparents, siblings, extended families, some are marginalized for how they present to the world, marginalized for who they love, marginalized because they don't fit the confines of our narrow societal gender roles. Our text from Romans has me thinking about our Trinitarian understanding of God. The five verses that Peggy read for us this morning include the three most common names of our Trinitarian understanding of our Creator, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. One God. Three intertwined entities. Using the new terminology we are being encouraged to learn, one could say, God is non-binary. <laughs> Let us pause and explore the definitions of binary non-binary. As an adjective, binary is relating to, composed of, or involving two things. As a more specific definition for this discussion, let's look at a definition for gender binary, which is the classification of gender into two distinct opposite forms of masculine and feminine, whether by social system, cultural belief, or both simultaneously. That might be new for some of you, so I'm just pausing for a bit to let that <laughs> sink in. And I am open to conversations. Um, in fact, I am learning as we go, like some of you are learning as we go. I have this great new book called The Queriotic Table. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a celebration of LGBT plus culture. It has so much rich history, people, timelines of, of timelines of historical people um, and, and the rights and the privileges and the loss of privileges. It's, it's an incredible book and I'm happy to loan it. So, <clears throat> folks who do not fit into the male, female, masculine, feminine, cat feminine categories are thus non-binary. What does it mean? 
It means many of God's children, as they live into their whole and complete lives, as Isaiah instructs us to do. Many do not fit neatly into one gender identity or the other, and some of them refuse to try to limit who they are or hide who they are for the sake of society's expectations, for the sake of society's comfort. They choose to live and express themselves in ways that are right for them. One would think that we might be able to extend our generosity of thought on our Trinitarian concepts of God to our human siblings. God, as we read about God in the Bible and in our relatively newly found non Hamadi texts, is both male and female, and neither male nor female. If, in fact, we are made in the image of God, then all of the wonderful and diverse expression, expressions of humanity are, in fact, God-given, God-accepted, God-affirmed. A question for you is, how can thinking of God in a Trinitarian way and a non-binary way inform and maybe increase your understanding of God? A new question I've been asking myself lately, what are God's pronouns? <laughs> Many of us have gotten more comfortable over the years with God not only as he, him, his, but also God as she, her, hers, and now even God as they, them, theirs. I certainly believe our God can be expressed in all of these ways and that we are made in these myriad images of God. We also have many names for God that are gender neutral, names that don't assume pronouns. God is creator, lawgiver, the one, the Lord, the savior, the liberator, the redeemer, the Holy Spirit, wind and flame, advocate, comforter, God cannot be hemmed in by our words and our categories. God is all this and so much more. Can we allow the expansiveness of our understanding of God to inform and increase our understanding of one another, especially our LGBTQ plus siblings, especially any that are marginalized in our worldwide society? We are more than our gender identities and expressions, more than our sexual orientations, more than who or how we love. God is unbounded by human definitions and ideas of what or who God is. And we should be too. Some of our queer siblings are brave enough and bold enough to be unbounded by the limiting binary definitions placed on them by society. Let us embrace them all. Let us make it safe for all to be themselves without fear of being taunted, harmed, or killed. And in aside, I got ahead of myself. Definitions are important, and yes, they change over time. The word queer used to be a homophobic slur, and some people still use it as such. However, the word queer is now an affirming, an affirming umbrella term for all of the LGBTQ plus spectrum of people. So when I use that word, it is in a very affirming and loving way. The Romans text read today is about the human struggles all around us. Can we approach the struggles that we all share individually and as co-inhabitants of this earth with the same grace God bestows upon us? Can we show less concern about differences and more concern about unity and love? In the coming days and weeks, I encourage you to give more thought to your pronouns and the pronouns of others. Don't take them for granted. Ask people as you meet them. 
When you meet someone new, it is becoming a sign of respect to ask what their pronouns are. We can learn to respect the majesty and mystery not only of the fullness of God, but also of all God's beloved humans. Yes, if we can wrap our hearts and minds around the triune God, we can wrap our hearts and minds around all gender expressions, all gender identities, all people of God, all people as God made them. This morning, we have a You Are Love flag hanging in our sanctuary, as Kathy pointed out. And before we end this service, I would love it if we could show that to the people online. You are loved. Yes, each one of you. You are loved. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are loved. You are welcome here today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Please join in body or spirit, and we will sing Help Us Accept Each Other from our Black Hymn Number. Join me in our prayer for transformation and new life. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we confess that we do not always need the wisdom that we require. We turn toward other marks and means of validation rather than toward you. We remain in awe of our own creation while devouring 
decimated yours. They continue to call us, we pray, and to surprise and delight us at your magnificence and majesty. May we always be in awe of your glory and humble by your goodness. Let our character be shaped toward hope and reflect your peace. <coughs> Receive the peace extended to us from the God of grace, who joined our embodied experience and who invites us to share glory, to the shared glory of the resurrection, resurrected life in which we are made new and whole. Amen. We're at the time where we quiet our minds and our hearts even more fully to bring our joys and concerns, our hopes and our fears to one another and to God. I begin this morning with news from Kenny and Marcia Stratton. Marcia started hospice this week and her life ended as we know it here on this earth last night at 9.30, surrounded by family, going peacefully. Um, we of course ask for your prayers, for the beauty Marsha's life and for and to uphold Kenny and David and Joy and Lori and that whole family as they grieve, as they learn to live without her immediate presence with us. Right now. Let's just hold a moment of silence. Again, we thank you for Marcia's life. We thank you for the love she shared with us and the love that you shared with her. We are grateful to have known her. We are grateful that she is resting peacefully with you. We know that the family will receive the support and love they need from you and from us. We have joys to share from, from Rachel. Um, I, I heard from Vicki that, that Rachel and baby Hazel are home again, home now, and, um, so healthy. And, and Vicki got to hold the baby. Yes? Yes. <laughs> very, very wonderful. Do we have other prayers to share? online or in the pews. We'll, we'll bring a microphone to Jane. And those online, you can unmute or you can tap in the chat. And I'll try to get that from you. My sister came back uh, for the summer here in Quebec. But she's really having a lot of difficulty. Uh, she's going through testing and whatever. She's uh, very weak. And it's certainly not anywhere near as active as she used to be, which was like super active. <laughs> so um, please pray for her. Prayers for Jean's sister Lynn. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've asked for prayers for um, my friend Cheryl, who's a retired teacher at the Hancock Family School. Um, who is in the uh, later stages of uh, her cancer treatment, and um, she's a remarkable, brave woman, um, and I know she would uh, be thrilled to have your prayers. Thank you. And we gather to get hold of that Cheryl and her prayers. We continue. Pray for those in Ukraine, Russia, all over the world experiencing war and violence. We are tired. Think what they must be. We continue to pray for justice to prevail in all aspects of the ongoing debates surrounding abortion and surrounding gun responsibility. We continue our prayers for Fran. For Kathy and Patty's childhood friend, Kathy Adams. And 
big sister Susan, for Bruce's sister Kim, for David's sister Sharon, for Vicky's brother Royce, for Steve and for Myrna, for Austin's cousin Dan, and for Tamara and for Andrew, and for Renata and the women she cares for, for Betty J and her stepdaughter Molly. Continue our prayers for Annie and Reed, Carolyn and Michael, and Eleanor's stepdaughter, Holly. Continue our prayers for Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, and his family. For Danny and Clementine, for Cynthia and Nancy. We pray for all struggling with mental health issues. We pray for all individuals and families experiencing addictions. We pray for those traveling from afar. We pray for caregivers. And we offer our prayers for those having or, or recovering from surgery, for those experiencing sudden illness, for those suffering chronic pain, for those awaiting tests and diagnoses and treatment plans. We offer our prayers for all affected by memory loss and all affected by living with depression. And we offer a time of silence. Holy God, you are more than we can know or name, yet we call on you again and again, for you alone are God. We cannot live apart from you, for you have called us into your triune life. Your steadfast love surrounds us all of our days. Wherever we may be, on a high mountain or a path in a shadowed valley, at a crossroads on, a, on our journey, Outside the gates of welcome or in some inner circle, you call to us, delighting in the human race. We come before you in thanksgiving for all the gifts you have given that delight us so. For the beauty of this season, for the lives of those who bless us beyond their knowing. For this community of faith by which we are nurtured and challenged. For opportunities to serve you by serving others. For goals accomplished and for the gift of life granted yet again today. We come humbly before you and hopeful in our needs. For those we know who are suffering today because of illness in mind, body, or spirit. For those trying to make a difficult decision. For those grieving a loss and ending a dream deferred. We pray for healing and strength in every broken place of our lives. May those who are starving, thirsty, or left in instructions to breathe be restored. We pray for the turmoil we cause through war and violence, hatred and prejudice, by our indifference and by our population. Bring an end to our warring ways until civilians and soldiers live in safety and peace. Root out of our hearts the seeds of bigotry and narrow-mindedness. Stir us from apathy increasing us empathy, that we can love as you love. Holy God, hear all of our prayers, spoken and silent, that we have shared this day. And hear this prayer as we join our voices together and pray the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
deacons will receive our offerings. Giver, steward, and guide, may these gifts we bring magnify beyond the boundaries of our community to create new possibilities in the world. and precious God, bless our offerings of presence, ability, and resources as we participate in your co-creation. Amen. Please remain standing in body or spirit. We will sing in the midst of new dimensions in our black hymnal number 391.
God of peace assure you. May the God of life invigorate you. May the God of wind direct you. Go in peace and hope to transform your community and the world to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.